Hi, today we're going to look at my final project for Ubic Music 307, a Max MSP project, the purpose of which is to make a score player and then also add some aleatory processes that warp the data. Um, so we'll start with the sequence player. Put that in an extra patch here. So the sequence player uses the call object, which is a collection object like a table. And if you double click on it, you get your table. So this is based on a score format like that in C sound. If we look at the different items, the first one is the event length. Then we have the actual note length, an amplitude value from zero to one, a MIDI note number, and then arbitrary parameters that can be mapped to whatever we want. So when you send the call object a bang, it outputs the entire message. It keeps track of an index. It also outputs the index of the second outlet. When you get to the end, it will output another bang. And if you hit it again, you can just get it to play endlessly. So when we bang the call object, the message goes out here. The duration of the event gets stored into the parameter value event dir, which gets used down here. And the note message goes out the outlet. At the same time, the current index value is compared against the length of the table in call. If we're not at the end, this bang will be delayed by the length of the event as opposed to the note. And that delay goes back to the top and rebangs for the next item. If we're on the very last item in the sequence, then these two numbers are going to match. This conditional expression is going to bang out the right. There'll be a delay again, but instead of that delay going back to the top and rebanging, it's going to go out outlet two, so that if you wanted to make a loop, you could rebang from outlet two to the top. And that's exactly what our player does. So when it gets to the end, there's a bang here, goes into this gate. That gate is our turn loop on and off toggle. And if the loop is enabled, the bang gets sent to the top again. This message shows us the output from the sequence for that note. So this is our note format. And that gets piped into the monosynth. Monosynth pretty straightforward. The only unusual thing is that it's expecting to receive a note of this format instead of a MIDI message. So that format has to be unpacked. The amplitude value gets used to trigger the ADSR object. And it also gets used to trigger an ADSR that's going to be sent to the filter cutoff. The MIDI note number gets mapped to a couple of oscillators. And at the end of the note, um, here goes the event duration at the or no, note duration rather, not event duration. At the end of the note, the ADSR is re-triggered with a zero value, and the ADSR object works that way. When you send it a zero, it enters its release phase. So that's how the notes end. The parameter fields that we can arbitrarily mapped to whatever we want are coming out the right of this unpack. We're only using the first two. So this parameter here is used to set a pan level between the rectangle wave and the saw wave. And the second one is used to add, um, basically to open the filter a little bit more or less. So down here, this ladder filter has a bunch of CV values that all work on the filter cutoff. One for the envelope, one for that P field, one for this LFO, and here's the resonance. The unusual thing about the beep modules is they expect values from zero to five, as if they're running on zero to five volts. So hence we have these adjusters that multiply our zero to one signal to be zero to five. So let's give uh, the listen. Turn it on, and bang the sequence. Let's turn on the loop. Here in this message box, we can see the events as they come up. So 
So after that, we have some delay objects. And what these delay objects do is actually delay the message instead of delaying audio. And I've made an abstraction called note delay and an abstraction called denote random. Note delay expects one of our score messages in. And if you send values for the other P fields, they get used as offsets before the message goes out and the delay value goes into the right hand inlet. So in this case, if we send minus 0.3 into the amplitude slot and P note random into the MIDI note slot, we're going to get an altered message. And you can see here they are. This message is the altered version of this one. So I've got a bug in there in that I never clamped the amplitude values, so it's folding over, but it's not too important. It still sounds interesting. The P note random patch just picks a random value that can be up or down an octave or a fifth, or up an octave and a fifth, or two octaves, and it receives a bang and outputs one of those notes. So it makes kind of an arpeggiator effect. And then this gets sent to a second clone of the mono sin that has slightly different values. So you can hear the echoing synth has pitches that are off by a fifth or an octave. And then we have two more passes of the same. So if we add those, sometimes the pitch is going to get fifths up, so it might be a second, which might be a couple of octaves. And you can hear that each of the mono sins has an LFO that's out of sync with each other, and it has different values set for the filter cutoffs. So different effects happen randomly.